Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S, Rodi, R-O-D-I. Okay, since we only have 15 minutes, I'm going to jump right in here. Um, how long has the diocese known about these allegations? Because some of them go on for uh, nearly 70 years, dating back to 70 years. We, these are alle credible allegations that we found in the files. Um, so as we've gone through the files over the past, since 1950. Okay, when did you start going through those files? Oh, several weeks ago. Now, there have, there have been other efforts in the past, but we went through all the personnel files that we have to, to make sure that the list that we we're putting out was as complete as possible. Okay, so you started several weeks ago. What prompted that um, for the first time in decades for some of these allegations? I've been hearing and I've been sensing among the people of the church a real desire to be assured once again that no one with credible accusations of misconduct are serving in the Archdiocese of Mobile. And just this desire, please tell us the facts. So both to uh, the people of the church and to the broader community, I hope that this will once again assure people of our commitment to protect our kids and that no one with credible accusations of misconduct of, uh, with kids is serving in Archdiocese. And I also hope that this will be a moment of healing uh, for people who have been abused by members of the clergy. And I'm also hoping, because uh, abuse of kids is not limited to any group or racial group, economic group, econ uh, religious group. It, it permeates our society. And I'm hoping that people who have been abused in other situations, not by clergy, will also find this a moment to seek healing and help. Okay, when was the last time you went through all those files and was that information given out to media? It was given to a report. This, would, this was before I became Archbishop. Okay. So this would have been in 2003. A report was made to um, uh, in a study that was being done on, on abuse of children by the, by the clergy, and that was, information was shared. Okay, um, and now it, this uh, information that we were given today, it says that uh, those who aren't deceased are prohibited from the archdiocese, uh, but are they allowed to, to be in a ministry somewhere else? The, the priests who are archdiocesan priests okay. are not allowed to serve anywhere. Okay. Uh, as far as members of religious orders, I, I doubt that they are. Because to, to serve somewhere else, a, a bishop is going to ask the religious order for a document, uh, a testimonial, that they are suitable for ministry. And a religious order, I doubt, would give that uh, with someone, for someone with an accusation of uh, abuse of a minor. Now, have any of these allegations gone into law enforcement? Because we did uh, checks on all of them, and we saw that a lot of these people who were accused, these uh, clergymen, priests, um, they were not taken to law enforcement. So, uh, you know, have you guys been working with law when enforcement? When accusations come in, I can only tell you what has been done uh, since I've been Archbishop. Accusations that we receive are reported to civil authorities. Okay. Um, we've seen, too, a lot of, there's a pattern here. We've seen several people being moved from facility to facility around Mobile County. Uh, example, McGill Tulin, Little Flower, um, some of those facilities have multiple names of people who have been accused uh, being moved from facility to facility. What do you have to say about that? I only, I, I know of one situation okay. where someone with a credible accusation was reassigned somewhere else. I can't defend that. Uh, that was done years ago. I can only tell you that would not be done now that we do not do that now. We have zero tolerance. So since 2003, uh, we have adhered to the charter for the protection of minors and young people, which the bishops ex uh, established in 2002. No one with a credible accusation is going to serve in the Archdiocese of Mobile. Okay. Um, do you believe that there's a pattern of abuse here, any collusion? Because some of those priests um, and people who are involved with the archdiocese um, have being moved from facility to facility they served in some places during the same time so what do you think do you think that there's a pattern here I don't we have no accusation uh, since 2000 against anyone in our archdiocese um, 
uh, of something that occurred since 2000, uh, except for one uh, conviction that was taken for possession of child uh, pornography possession. Um, so there's no collusion that I would see because we haven't had any accusation of something occurring in, in the past several years. Okay, well one of the cases we were looking at was Arthur Schringer. I think I'm saying that properly. Uh, he was at Little Flower and the guilty one as well. His accusations go on for, uh, I think, 22 years. Why was that allowed to go on for so long? I wasn't here. I don't know. I don't know when it was uh, uh, reported and how it was, uh, how it was handled at, uh, at that point. Interesting. What's John Sherlock, uh, his also went on for a, a decent chunk of time, his ac accusation span. So my question is just seeing this, why action wasn't taken sooner, and it's 2018. A lot of these um, date back to the 70s, 80s. Uh, why is something just being made public about it now? I can't tell you what was done years ago. And if someone was reassigned after a credible accusation, I can't defend that. All I can tell you is that that is not what we do now. It is not the way we handle things. That if there's a credible accusation of abuse of a minor by someone in church ministry, they no longer serve. We report it to civil authorities and they no longer serve. You said that there was a case uh, years ago prior to you being here where someone was reassigned to another school. What was the name of that person? Uh, that was all in the media. Okay. And, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you have any current cases going on? Because we're talking about cases from over the years. Do you have any uh, in recent years where someone has been banned um, that has not been listed on this list that we were given? No, anyone with a credible accusation okay. that we know of is on that list. Okay, um, and then do you think it's fair to just give us 15 minutes to talk about this, given the fact that this is 70 years of abuse? I, given the fact of how many people are asking for interviews today, okay. it's a way that everyone has an opportunity. Okay. So if we do have um, more questions, would we be allowed to come back and do more interviews with you? Yeah, I'd, I'd be willing to talk with the media. Okay. And I think I'm showing that today by meeting with any members of the media that want to come and see me. Okay. Um, so just kind of explain to me again the importance of why you guys are doing this, releasing this list um, and getting those names out there. Why it's so important for you to do that? I think it's important. First of all, I pray it'll be an opportunity for healing for victims. But I, uh, and at the same time, I want the people of the church and of the broader community to know that we are serious, that people who have accusations of, credible accusations of misconduct do not serve in the Archdiocese of Mobile. That is our policy, it's been our policy, and it's gonna to continue to be our policy. We, we report accusations to civil authorities. We have an independent uh, committee, mostly comprised of lay people who are not employed by the archdiocese that advise us. Background checks, safe environment training for our employees, clergy, volunteers who deal with youth, our kids who are in our schools, our parish youth programs, our parish religious education programs. We have annual retraining. <clears throat> we are doing everything reasonable to protect our kids when they're involved in church ministry. That's what this is all about, uh, to protect our kids and to let people know that we are serious about this. Yeah, we have this fact sheet here and it goes over some things. Um, what resources are available if somebody is dealing with abuse within the church? We have an office for the protection of minors and adults. Okay. They can call. <clears throat> we often provide counseling. We also have on our website uh, the contact information for the Department of Human Services of the state of Alabama and the local sheriff's uh, information for each of the 28 counties that comprise the Archdiocese of Mobile. 